Good morning, everyone, or good evening, good afternoon, and welcome to the Classroom 2.0 live session today. We're so glad that you've joined us. I'm Kim Case, and pleased to co-host today with Peggy George and Lorna Constantini, and we'll see Steve Hargett on with us in the session today. And we're going to be talking today about Images for Education and EVO. And we have a very special guest, Carla Arana, today, here for, uh, all the way from Brazil, talking with us. Each week at this same time, we gather to discuss the technology tools and issues in education. Our broadcast consists of a one-hour session that is recorded. The link to the full video, audio recording, and chat log will be posted to our Classroom 2.0 live site at live.classroom20.com. The topic each week is posted on the Classroom 2.0 live site so that you can be prepared with links, ideas, and tools that you'd like to share. And the newbie question of the week is posted so that you can bring possible ideas or solutions to share with everybody in our session. Before we begin, I'd like to review some of the features that we'll be using today in Illuminate. During today's sessions, we'll be asking some poll questions. To cast your vote, you'll be using the green check mark or the red X at the top window in the menu. You won't click or mark anything on the whiteboard or the slides at that time. Below the participant window is a hand with a little green arrow on it. And if you'd like to ask a question or share a comment, please click on that to raise your hand and you'll be given the ability to use the microphone to speak in, in the session. Next to the hand are two emoticons, the applause symbol and a thumbs down symbol. And in the very far right is a little blue door. If you need to step away from your computer, please click on the blue door and then we'll know that you're not available at that time and we will uh, know that you have stepped away from your computer. Below those symbols is a message to the room. It is the message window if you'd like to send a message to the entire room or to specific people. You would type your message and then click the drop down arrow to specify who you'd like to send the message to. If you wanted to send the message to this room, make sure the words this room are visible. And if you wanted to send it to a specific person or all of the moderators, you would use the drop down arrow to make your selection. Moderators are able to see all private messages throughout the session, so keep that in mind when you're sending your messages. And in the very bottom left is the button to activate your microphone. Click the microphone to begin speaking and be sure to click the microphone when you're finished speaking to deactivate your microphone. If you can't see the chat or the whiteboard or you wanted to resize the windows, you can change the session layout. Click on View in the very top menu. The layout may be locked, so you need, may need to click on the Layout Locked option to unlock the feature. You can then select a desired layout as shown on the right in the window, or you can drag out the individual windows and resize them to fit your screen or your preferences. We also offer closed captioning features today by Tammy, who provides the service for us. If you have friends or colleagues who are hearing impaired, please let them know that um, they can view the recording or attend our sessions. And all they would need to do is join the session and click on the CC. And they will be able to read the closed captioning features and the text that Tammy is typing for us. And we thank her for providing these services for us. The next slide talks about the introductions that we're going to do in the, using the laser pointer. And the laser pointer tool is the wand, the little blue wand with the red sunburst style at the end. So if everybody could please click on that blue wand with the sunburst and click on the location on the world map. 
you may need to drag your little sunburst doll over to the right a little bit as the sunburst tends to move to the left a little bit. And it's great seeing where everybody is located. We're seeing lots of people in North America and Canada. It's like up in Alaska, of course in Brazil, Europe. I'm assuming that's Hawaii, the ones that are out in the ocean. But um, we are so, Ukraine, excellent, that's wonderful. We are so glad that you have joined us, whether you're in the ocean or on the continent. And we're so glad that you've taken your time with us to join today and join our session with Carla as we talk today about images and images for education. So we're going to go ahead and move forward now and talk about our polling questions. And we're going to be using the green check and the red X in the top menu. You won't be clicking anything on the whiteboard or the slide. Oops, wrong arrow. And our first poll question is, do you know what the EVO, the Electronic Village Online, is? If you know, please click the green check. And if you're not sure, click the red X. But by the end of today's session, I know that that percentage will change. But at the moment, if you do know, click the green check. And if you do not know what the EVO is, please click the red X. And I'll go ahead and give you just a few more seconds and then get the percentage. And every time I hear EVO, I think of with our music that we had at the beginning of the show, ELO, the music group. And we're not talking about the ELO. Let me get the percentage. And it looks like 59% of our group is not familiar with the EVO. And about 14% in the group is familiar. So that's going to be a great percentage. And I know at the end of the show, it will be 100% will be green checks. So let's go on to our next question. And have you ever participated in an EVO course? So if you have, click the green check. If you have not, click the red X. And let me go ahead and get the results in just a few seconds. If you have the green check and have not, the red X. And 62% who participated in the courses. And 10%, I'm sorry, 62% have not. And 10% have participated in the MBO course over at the Images for Education name. That's a small percentage, but I'm have the feeling that percentage will change. And let's go on to our last poll question. Have you ever used Flickr or related Flickr tools to create classroom projects with your students? If you've used Flickr or some of the great Flickr tools that are out there to create student projects, please click the green check at the very top menu. And if you have not used Flickr, click the red X. Because I know in some places, Flickr, in some school districts, Flickr is blocked. And some of the Flickr tools are blocked, too, although you could possibly isolate some of the pictures and save them on a CD or something. But if you have used Flickr tools or Flickr to create student projects, click the green check. If you've not used Flickr or Flickr tools, Click the red X, and let me get those percentages. And about 38% have, and about 34% have not. Pretty even percentages there. 
um, have used Flickr. So I'm um, hopeful that after today's session, you'll have some great ideas and ways that you might want to consider using Flickr or sites similar to Flickr uh, services after today's session. So I'm going to go ahead and now pass the mic to Peggy, who's going to talk about the Classroom 2.0 Live Digo Group. Peggy, off to you. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm experimenting with web tour myself today, so Kim may have to bail me out if this doesn't work out. Um, there are two things I wanted to show you on our web tour today. One is something that Kim mentioned last week, and we are very excited to have you join us in this group. We've created a group just for Classroom 2.0 Live on Digo, and um, we've begun to populate the bookmarks by adding all of our share tabs and our um, GLAM links from each week's show. But we wanted to have this group so that we could continue to add the links that all of you share during our chat. Uh, in each show. So with each week, we'll be adding additional links that may not be in the compiled links. And if there are sites that you'd like to share there, please come and join our group and add your bookmarks to that site. It will be a great place for us to uh, continue the sharing after the shows are over. And the next thing, which is also related to Digo that I wanted to share with you, is um, web slides. And I'm going to put that link in here. If, you're, if you've used Digo at all, you will know that um, they have this special feature where you can um, create lists, and then play them as web slides. And I've created a list of photo sites. I actually started this a couple of years ago. And I've added some new sites to it today based on some things Carla's going to be talking about. But this is what a list looks like on Digo. This is my list of photo sites. And what I wanted to show you is this little icon here that says Web Slides. And when you click on Web Slides, when you have a Digo list, it will come up. And I hope that this will come up for us. It may not. Um, but when you click on that little icon with the play arrow for web slides, the web slides begin to play. And every site that you have on your list will come up as the actual website. The website is interactive. You can pause it. You can click on links on the site, go to the site, and come back to your list and your web slides. I found that this is a wonderful tool for sharing um, resources with uh, people in workshops so that everything is ready to go and you have the websites all ready to come up instantly. So if you haven't tried lists on Digo, be sure to check that out. And now I'm going to pass the mic on to Lorna, who's going to introduce our newbie question of the week and our special guest. Thanks, everybody. Thanks very much, Peggy. That's a really great uh, tool. I was really excited when you taught me how to do that last night. So. Mm -hmm. so thank you. My job is now to introduce our guest for the day, and that's Carl Arena. Carl and I have only met online, and specifically we've crossed paths as Webcast Academy um, participants as well as the Images for Education. Uh, network, but uh, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about Carla. And Carla's a Brazilian EFL teacher, and uh, she's passionate about educational technology. And as far as I can see, she's passionate about education. She's certainly passionate about sharing because if you start following uh, Carla's name across the internet, you're going to see. 
such a wealth of uh, educational sites and learning experiences that we can all enjoy. And currently, she's the EdTech supervisor, teacher trainer, and e-learning designer, facilitator at the Bi National Center in Brasilia at the Casa Thomas Jefferson School. Um, she is part of the Webhead online community of educators, and she's involved in the TESOS Electronic Village Online, which is the EVO, as a coordinator and session moderator. And Carla has a specific uh, expertise in being a moderator. It takes a tremendous amount of energy and motivation to do this job, and she glides through this job. Wherever I find her, she motivates people. She uh, inspires them to do some great work. So I'm really excited that Carla's with us today to share this wealth of information and at least get us started on uh, our own personal journey with uh, what Carla has to offer to us. So Carla, welcome. And now is your opportunity to um, take the microphone and present what you'd like to tell us about your experiences with images and the EVO. Welcome, Carla. Hi, everybody. Well, I'm here in Brasilia, Brazil, and I'm really glad to be with you all. Um, it's a huge pleasure to be talking about something that is dear, really dear to me. Um, of course, you're going to have all the links available. The, the girls have, have done a wonderful job compiling everything there for you in the GLAM links. But uh, you will be following me, and then we can just, you know, uh, see the links that I have to show to you today. Well, I'm here today to talk about the Images for Education, which was, um, which is, I would say, because it's still um, uh, pretty active, mainly right now, and I'm, I'm going to talk to you about that. But Images for Education is the TESO Electronic Village Online project. And um, TESO is a teacher's organization uh, for um, speakers of other languages, yes, learning English. And they realized that many of uh, international educators could not be present in their uh, annual conference. So they decided to have this electronic village online. And if you want to explore it later on, you'll see how much we have to offer in the Electronic Village Online. They are all free sessions running for six weeks, um, starting in January, and it goes up to the end of February. Um, they are all free and open. And though we offer this to TESO members, non-members can also profit from this professional development experience. This year, we had 19 uh, electronic village online sessions running together, like at the same time, in all kinds of topics you can imagine, from drama to images, going through um, uh, the Internet for Beginners. Uh, we had um, uh, Second Life, uh, multiliteracies, all kinds of interesting sessions you can imagine. Um, then, um, I've been moderating sessions in the Electronic Village for, um, I would say, I, I think it's my, th yes, my third um, session. I've had the two previous experiences with uh, blogging. So we had blogging for beginners the first year, and then we had blogging for educators. And then I was like, oh, I need to uh, move on and learn something uh, else. So I decided to invite some of my online friends to join me as moderators in this session that I just thought it would be really nice to have, which was the Images for Education. And um, our idea in the Images for Education was really to engage teachers to try different ways of using images in the classroom. That was the main idea, Did, uh, like image literacy for teachers. And I think we, we've done a pretty good job. Uh, I think uh, we, we had lots of nice feedback about it. And we had a wonderful team of 13 um, educators around the globe. So Nina is here with us. And uh, they were, uh, she is in the Ukraine, and I was 
in Key West at that time. I was living in Key West and we had people from Japan, Portugal, Brazil, Moldova, um, the U.S. And, uh, well, the fact that we had this team uh, working behind the scenes really made a difference in the sense of the kind of activities we had. So we started in January and we had the session for six weeks with specific um, tasks every week. And if you want, everything is open. Uh, what we say in the EVO sessions is that we have an open learn open source learning. That's the idea. Everything is open. You can access all the materials we worked with, all the resources. And you can even um, invite a group of educators in your school to um, have the session. Like have a group all together and just try out things there. It's it's just uh, it's always open. That's the idea. So you will see uh, when you access our page our online spaces. Uh, why so many online spaces? Um, the main group was the place. It was the place for the connections where we really connected. Then we had the Deagle, just like Peggy was pointing out. Deagle was um, something that we, our place to share resources. And it's still pretty active. The wiki, the imagesforeducation.pbworks.com was the place, it was like our road map. It was exactly where we um, knew what to do in each week. And then we had Flickr as another uh, meeting point because we had, we started with Flickr, but Flickr, uh, using Flickr for educational purposes. Um, the, the Ning, as I pointed out, started as the connecting point for everybody. And um, I'm just very excited to tell you that now we are 500 members there. And even after the session is, is of, uh, was officially over, we, ke we kept getting more and more members. And uh, people are still there. People are still joining us. And please feel free to join us there. Um, we had participants from all over the globe as it is open so and it's free everybody could join you the participants only needed an internet connection and uh, the willingness to learn that was all um, we had all kinds of activities one of my favorite activities that I'm going to share with you was this one, where I'm from. Of course, I didn't get this idea. I got from um, uh, from Twitter, my Twitter network. And one day, there was uh, a person sharing this where I'm from idea with students. So I thought it would be really neat to have that with a group of educators. What we did, um, we had like the poem, where I'm from and um, like a sample. And then each of the participants should write their own poems and share their photos, their online photos um, in Flickr. And then they share the photos with the poems. You can imagine how rich this activity was. Uh, we, sh we have a group in Flickr called Images for Education. Uh, they they had the link a while ago here in the chat area, and um, this activity is just fantastic. You can still access it in our Flickr group if you join us there. Um, we had wonderful conversations, and it was pretty. They were pretty decentralized. There was no way one person could keep up with everything with. We had talked, but it worked. Um, we had the team members, and we also had what we called uh, e-moderators, so e-tutors. If, if a person felt um, he or she was kind of lost, we partnered them up with another member of the group that was more comfortable 
with um, the tools and, and the browsing and the everything. So we had this e tutoring program there which worked pretty nicely and the conversations are just so rich because of the the uh, representation of many different uh, nationalities with many different views and issues related to images in education. Um, and of course, everything that we shared there could be um, adapted to um, educators' own reality. We, we had some samples of activities that could be done there, but um, of course, everybody could personalize based on what they saw there. And the idea was to have something really hands-on so that the educators could be in the shoes of a learner. And we need to do that all the time, but uh, the point was really to show how the students could work, what kind of problems they could face, and, you know, uh, by doing that, uh, educators would have more tools to have a successful experience with uh, the group. And um, these conversations, I'm, I'm really glad to tell you that they, they were quiet for a while. Uh, of course, we have like a EVO hangover because it's very intense. Um, we need to be there all the time and, and interacting and there is so much to learn and so much to share and we get carried uh, over by so many things to do. So um, we had, after the session was over, we kept sharing uh, resources and um, th that's the power of Deagle, for example, which is an, on an online social bookmarking place and it's still it is still very strong. We, we keep sharing our uh, favorite resources related to images for education in our Deagle group and everybody here is um, very welcome to join us there. So even the not so active people uh, share their links there when they find something interesting with the group. Um, another aspect, so I was talking to you about the conversations. After the session was over and after the hangover, when we could uh, recover from the hangover, people said, oh no, we don't want this to finish this way. We want to, we have a community here and we want to keep um, interacting. So what we did, um, we tried to keep um, some activities for the ones who wanted to join us there. And the first two months was really, were really interesting because um, people decided to explore some of the tools they didn't, they didn't have the chance to explore during the EVO session. So something that they found really useful, but as time, as we are all pressed for time and we couldn't do, we couldn't explore the tool, our idea was to explore one tool that could be useful. And then um, you, you have, you can have this, uh, you will see this link available for you, yes, um, in the Images for Education uh, hyphen link dot And there um, you will see the resources we explored after the session was over, plus um, some examples the educators created with those um, tools. Um, so, as I was talking about these conversations, we had this um, idea of keep sharing and keep doing things related to images. Of course, it's not easy for very busy um, educators with a hectic life to keep um, the, the level of interactivity after the EVO is over. And so I, I kind of left it open, an open space for anyone who wanted to do things there. But as I was moving back to Brazil, I, I couldn't also, um, um, you know, follow up on everything that was happening there. But let me tell you something very exciting, and it's really related to here. Um, just the day before yesterday, 
one of the members posted there that they wanted to uh, they wanted someone to have an exchange a photo exchange with uh, her group in Japan. And uh, well, um, I answered to her, and then I just broadcasted the message to the whole group. We are 500 educators, and I said, I'm sure somebody will um, join us here. And some time ago, I had created this group, this Flickr group, Schools Around the Globe, but it was kind of dormant. Um, so when she said that she wanted to have a project like that, I said, well, maybe we could try using the Flickr group. Well, all of a, all of a sudden, the conversation started um, arising again, and people were all excited. So for next semester, we are planning um, an international collaborative endeavor in Flickr. And you are all very welcome to join us. Um, it's exciting to know that people, uh, educators are understanding that um, professional development is not something that we start and we finish. Professional development needs to be sustainable. There is so much happening online that we cannot just, you know, start something and finish. It's not that linear. And once educators start um, realizing that, they really understand the power of being in a community. And uh, when this community uh, is there, why not using the power of the community to collaborate? So that's our idea. Um, Images for Education was an online session, but it's becoming a community, and a community is not top down that I, a group of people create and it's there. No, it's something bottom up. So um, I can see that this community is really getting together again. Um, the hangover is really over now that most of educators are winding down with uh, breaks, uh, school breaks, and holidays, vacation. So they can really focus on that, and I would really love to see you there with us. We are, we are just starting to have people joining um, our Schools Around the Globe Flickr group, and we intend to see how we can develop this project, international collaborations for the second semester of 2009. And this is the idea of the Images for Education and EVO, an open space for professional development. Now I would really like to leave the mic open for you. I want to give floor to you, and I would be more than glad to interact with you. And if you have any questions about Images for Education or EVO, let me know through uh, the text chat or the uh, mic. Okay, the floor is all yours, guys. Okay, if you have sure. a question, if you have a question yes, that you'd like too. to ask Carla, go ahead and uh, please click on the hand with the green arrow, or you're welcome to go ahead and type in your question. Um, Tammy has typed a question, Carl. Is EVO part of Images for Education or vice versa? Okay, great question. Um, the Images for Education was one of the sessions in the Electronic Village Online. So imagine, um, Tammy, that the Electronic Village is the village, and every online session is one of the buildings in this village. So Images for Education was one of the buildings there. Great, thank you. Um, there was another question. Can you just join one of the six sessions in a course? No. In fact, uh, it's up to you. Some people join many other sessions, but they cannot follow because it's so intense. I always advise uh, advise newcomers to join just one of the sessions. Um, at most, 
too, but I would say if you really want to profit and if you really want to make strong connections and profit from the session, try joining one. Um, people get really overwhelmed and at the end they have their hands so full that sometimes they just give up and that's not the idea. The idea is to make stronger bonds, uh, make connections and learn. So I would say join one. If you, if it's your first time in, in an electronic village online session. Oh, okay. Uh, and you're somebody has about yes. Go ahead. Yes, the globe. Uh huh. The flicker tool that you use to yes. create. Mm -hmm. Um, I used uh, what I did there. I used something called Tag Galaxy. I don't know if you have the link now. Of course. Somebody remembers the link for Tag Galaxy. Tag Galaxy is a very cool tool that um, is connected to a Flickr. Yes, Tag, Tag Galaxy, Nergis, if you could find me the link. I, I'm a terrible multitasker. <laughs> um, <laughs> so in Tag Galaxy, you, you can um, add any keyword, any tag, Related and they grab the, the photos from Flickr. Yes, it's taggalaxy.de. So I grabbed one of those um, globes. I tried to get some of the images there. And then I took a screenshot and um, uh, uploaded to my Flickr account. And my Flickr account is synced with uh, Picnic, Picnic.com, which is uh, an image editor, a fantastic, a fan fantastic image, online image editor. So there I added the, the text um, images for educators, as you can see, image for education, sorry, as you can see here. So first I, here, first I, Grabbed. I grabbed here this area here, the in Tag Galaxy. Then I went. I, I uploaded this to Flickr, and after that, I went to Picnic to edit the image and the text. That was it. Another question there. Okay, Jackie, if you want to ask something. Oh, Sue is asking if, um, can you just listen in on part of a session rather than follow the whole thing? Yes, um, so in fact, our the way that we make things is like this. We structure just like any e-learning um, opportunity, like with tasks, with um, online spaces for people to interact and for people to learn and to connect. However, it's really open in the way that you want to participate. You don't have grades there. You are not um, assessed in like formally assessed. But of course, um, if you really want to profit from the whole experience, it's great that when you can create things, when you can share with others what you are learning. But lurkers are always welcome. Um, I'd say that from we have this experience that one third of the participants we will really be there with us all the time. Others will be lurkers. All others will just you know um, come and go. It's really open. The doors are open. Um, you participate as you wish. That's the idea of any EVO session. One of the questions that I saw earlier was how does Picklet fit into this session? How does what? Sorry, Kim, I didn't hear that. How does Picklet, how does, um, 
it's one of the resources that they use. Pick lips. Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, okay. Maybe one of the maybe one of the the resources that uh, people were sharing. Okay. Um, I'm pick lips. Okay, is now pull items. Yes. Okay. Yes. Right. Thank Pick you. Lens Thank is you. a wonderful. Yes, Picklens is a wonderful um, web application uh, in which you can uh, see your images on the computer in a totally different uh, way. Yes, TruePeg is a Firefox plugin and it's really fun. Yes, uh, this is one of the things. Uh, but maybe because the the um, the logo of the images for education, it's kind of like. How picklands will show you the photos? I don't know. Maybe the images. Any other questions? I I really hope you can all join um, the sessions. And also, if you feel you have something to share with us, we have the call for um, uh, the proposals for participations, and um, you can be a moderator in one of the electronic village online sessions. Remember, it's all volunteer based. Uh, all the moderators there are volunteers, and everybody who joins are just there because they want to be there. Um, if you want to know more about the sessions, you can just go to Carl, I have a question for you. A little bit different than actually the the the, the images part about the EVO and the way mm -hmm. that you did the course design. Do you want to talk about how the group got together and actually set up these courses? Because they're really exciting the, the approach that you take to not only moderator, but how did you decide, you know, which activities to choose and, and uh, design the course layout to engage people? Yeah, very very interesting question, Lorna. Because um, I am also part of the EDO coordinating team, the the team that decides, like uh, um, talks about the proposals, decides who's going to be um, moderating the sessions. Not who's going to be moderating the sessions, but which sessions are ready to be part of the EDO and things like that. And one of the things that my colleagues told me about my session when I when I had the proposal there was how they were worried about how we would manage with 13 um, moderators. It could be a, a success or a totally a, a total disaster, really, because um, there are so many people with uh, cultural um, different cultural backgrounds, and they were really worried about that. And I said, "No, relax. We are going to do that." What I think um, I learned a lot from the other set, the previous sessions I had moderated, the uh, blogging for educators and blogging for beginners, which are also available online. You can just uh, search for them, and they will be there for you to access. But um, I learned a lot in terms of um, team moderation from Gladys Baez. She's an Argentinian, and she was in charge of the first uh, blogging for uh, beginners. So then I learned the following, Lorna, first. If, uh, with a, a group like this, um, still, if we are if we are working on a, you know, on an equal basis in terms of moderation, still we need a team leader, someone that is going to keep track of uh, calendars, uh, deadlines, um, someone who's going to check who's going to do what, um, tasks, sharing tasks, and things like that. So this is what I did mainly with the images for education. I tried to organize things for um, my colleagues because they didn't have much time to do it. They were all engaged in their school years and working a lot. And as I, I, I was working, but at home, and it was a different uh, situation, so I had more flexibility. I, we uh, first 
we decided what we wanted in each week all together. And we had like uh, Skype meetings and we created the uh, Yahoo groups for the back channel talk. And so we had an images uh, Yahoo group so we kept discussing their things. And we had the Google Docs also to, I, I just posted the calendar and each one decided each which week they wanted to work with. And it was pretty easy to do that. We had teams, like small, smaller teams working in different weeks. And then, of course, I would just uh, go around and, and see how things were going and um, helping, um, the, helping the, to, how would I say that, to have this unity for the six weeks. Because everyone has a, a, different, style, a different style in terms of organizing the wiki or the task or things like that. So the only thing I, well, of course, I organized some of the weeks and gave ideas. But the main thing is like to, after all the job is done, to have this sense of unity that uh, one week is ind independent but um, has a synergy with the other week. So that was pretty much the idea. We worked on, uh, we used all the possible tools to organize things. Even Deagle, the online social bookmarking that we have on Images for Education, Deagle, we had one specifically for like this back channel gathering of resources. So that's the way we, we work. Uh, very democratically, but still we need a leader, otherwise things um, are not done or, you know, we miss the deadlines and things like that. And, and when it's open, everything needs to be set up. That's the idea. Um, Carla, we had a question earlier about um, the work that you do, um, images for education, is that for primary children and the work that you're doing with young learners? Um, not really. Um, the images for education, we had educators in all school educational settings from uh, pre-K to uh, college, I would say, university level. Um, of course, as, as it is a TESOL uh, project, there were many language teachers, but uh, language teachers working in regular schools. In my case, for example, I work for a binational center in Brazil. And what does that mean? It's a language school. Uh, my, my students, the students there only go to, to our language institute to learn English. And uh, we have, and they go after their school period. So uh, sometimes they have, uh, sometimes no, they always have uh, English at school, but still they think they need more and they go to our language school. We are, we have 14, 14,000 students in our school. And, but we had all kinds of settings really. Um, it's, uh, everything that we did there is, adaptable to any kind of educational setting. It's just up to our imagination to adapt it to our own situation and reality. That's the idea. And um, Peggy asks if you could describe one of your activities um, from the images for education site or one of the courses. Um, okay, um, I, I shared one, the where I'm from. But if you really want to see the examples, you can join, um, you can access our wiki, and you mainly you can access our name to see what people did there and what people were doing there. So just access imagesforeducation.name.com. But there was one of the activities, the first ones we had to meet each other, and this was the most exciting ones I've ever had. Um, I had this idea of um, instead of just oh introducing ourselves, oh hi, my name is, -na 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 -na, I'm from, -na -na, 
We had the view from my window, exactly, Lorna. This was one of the most exciting activities I've ever had with the group. And of course, I had many, but this one was really special. The idea was the following. Uh, educators took pictures of where a view from their window. And you had all kinds of seasons of the year, all kinds of backgrounds. It was just lovely to see everybody's images. So after the view from their window, then they would um, tell a little bit more about themselves, about where they were and um, what they were doing. And the interaction there was just fantastic. I don't know how many um, conversations sprang from there. João, uh, João is from Portugal. He was one of our moderators in the Images for Education group too. He's here with us. Uh, Nina Link Lincoln, she was also a moderator in the images session, and she's in the Ukraine right now. So see the power of the of technology nowadays. I am here in Brazil. João is in Portugal, and Nina is in the Ukraine. It's just amazing. So this is just one of the examples that we had during the session. But we worked with Flickr. We worked with uh, voice threads uh, for storytelling. And each week we had a focus. So we had um, photo sharing uh, spaces. Then we worked with digital storytelling. It was just uh, full of adventures and um, full of resources that people kept sharing there. And you can access all that. I remember the view from the window, and people would um, share why they posted um, the image and why they chose that particular window and, and what inspiration prompted them to share that window. That was really an interesting project. Yes. There was another one, Kim, that I'm just, um, uh, I, there was one in Flickr. If people here join our Flickr uh, Images for Education group, you'll be able to see this. In the discussion area, we had an activity like that. It was a, um, it was a web tour. Uh, we just um, found the most interesting spaces in Flickr for that had an educational use of Flickr, and we shared that with the group. And then they had to they discussed that and came up with different ideas for uh, Flickr educational uses. It was just amazing. And one of uh, the tours that we had, which was really exciting for educators, was a maze. It was like this. It was a story maze. So according to what you selected on the Flickr picture, it would take you to different parts of the school. It was just a fantastic um, idea. And some of the members even uh, tried to do their own story maze using Flickr. This was fantastic. Does Images for Education have a Twitter account? Um, we we try to we we use the hashtag all the time images for education so you can look for that and I think we have a, a Twitter group I I need to check that out uh, who has that shamble um, shambles later on I can give you that yes um, I can look for that I I'm sure we had I created one that we connected everybody. Okay, that sounds great. Because I know people would love to to have that, be able to share that, and connect that way. Yes, and there's there's but a Facebook know, group too, right? Yes, I think there is. But I I would say that the main, if you want to keep like following and and getting wonderful resources, I would say that the best place to go is the name now because of our international collaborative project, and you can talk to so many people there. And also, um, the Deagle group. The, the, the Deagle group is just wonderful. Every day I get different resources that people share there with us. So I would say go for it. Go for the Deagle and the Ning group. 
and if you want to see what what happened and the kind of the kinds of activities we had in Flickr is also really really exciting. Well, th these have been great, and I know they've really inspired and given each of us, you know, some things to think about. Um, I know m most of us in the United States, our school years have come to a close and kind of winded down, uh, but definitely something to think about for summer school or personal work for the summer and to start the year off for next school year. Um, Kind of creating those lesson plans over the summer. So these it's are true, great Kim. ideas. It's it's true, Kim. I th I would suggest that, uh, for example, you can um, have a group of educators working on at least that one week that you think it would be useful for your school, and partner up with other educators, and you know. Uh, maybe how about having some Flickr fun or digital storytelling. You can follow all the tasks there. They are all there for you. You don't need to prepare anything. It's all Creative Commons license. So just feel free to use them. Well, thank you so much, Carla. These are great, great ideas. And I know that people can take the ideas, expand, make them their own. Um, adapt them for their situations and the classes that they currently have. And we thank you so much for providing this resource to give us a good start and that foundation uh, so that we can build upon these skills for ourselves and build that capacity. So thank you so much for the great work that you that you're doing and that you're starting and helping build those skills within us. So thank you, Carla. Thank you, Kim. It was my big, big pleasure to be here with you. This is the spirit of educa the education in the 21st century, sharing and caring for, you know, the community. Thank you, guys. Definitely. And speaking of community, um, another uh, mean community that Steve Hargadon, our creator, has. Of classroom today has created is futureofeducation.com, and next week Joyce Valenza and friends will be on on June 18th, Thursday at 8 p.m. and 5 p.m. Pacific. Steve Hargadon will be interviewing Joyce Valenza, and there will be um, a session and discussion about is there a place for media specialists who don't know social media. So you can join in that discussion and uh, weigh in and give your opinion on June the 18th. And the future of books and reading on Wednesday the 17th, another interview session with Steve Hargadon. So those are part of futureofeducation.com. And Frontline's Digital Nation Project with the producer and the director, Rachel Dretzen, um, on June the 17th at 8 p.m. Pacific, 8 a.m. Pacific, and 11 a.m. Eastern will be another interview with Steve Hargadon. And those are all um, sessions that are in conjunction with the Future of Education, or PBS, and KnowledgeWorks. So you can find out more information at the futureofeducation.com. And those are interview sessions that are courtesy of Steve Hargadon. So please check those out and stay tuned. And I see that uh, Steve just put the Clay Shirky agreed to an interview as well. So stay tuned and find out when that will be scheduled, the date and time coming up soon. That will be another great interview that you're going to want to uh, stay tuned for. So be sure to become a, a member of that mean community so that you can be kept aware in the breast of all of the upcoming interviews and sessions through the futureofeducation.com name. Next week, June 20th, we're going to also have a special guest, Steve Hargadon, who is not new, but is always welcome to join us. And the topic is going to be the great buzz about Learn Central. And if you're not familiar with what Learn Central is, please, please join us. 
Uh, he, we will be talking about what is Learn Center and how can you get involved. And this is definitely um, a community that you're going to want to uh, join and find out about. And if you're not certain what Learn Central is, then please be sure that you join us next Saturday or listen to the recording to find out what Learn Central is. And I'm just going to give you a teaser, and that's it, um, because it is an exciting, exciting community um, that you're not going to want to miss. So I'll leave it at that and just give you a little teaser. So please join us next week on the 20th at the same time, 12 p.m. Eastern, uh, for Learn Central. And we would love to thank uh, our very special guest, Carla, for joining us today, and Steve Hargadon, who is the founder of Classroom Toronto and Future of Education com. And thank you so much to everybody who participated today, all the way from Brazil to Ukraine, uh, from Thailand, from wherever you are, whether it's morning, afternoon, evening, nighttime. Uh, with wherever it is in your part of the world, we thank you for joining us each and every Saturday or Saturday evening and morning. Um, we couldn't do this without you and your support and your participation. And of course, we want to extend a special thanks to Illuminate for providing this forum every week for us to meet, to share, to grow, and to learn each and every week. Um, so thank you so much for um, joining us today, and thank you, Carla for all the work that you do in providing these communities, you and Steve, and we want to encourage you to continue to take your pictures, share your images, share your resources with the Digo groups, join the Digo groups and the different communities out there, and continue to share those ideas and great things that are coming uh, with all of your networks and resources that you have uh, available to you. So have a great day, great evening, great night, wherever you are in your part of the world. And thank you again for joining us. And see you next week as we talk about Learn Central. Thank you. And have a great day, evening, or goodbye. And as we're closing out, I'm going to post the survey in the chat as well as on the slide. And you can go ahead and click on the slide as well as in the chat to directly access the survey. And please give us feedback on the survey. Um, the survey goes to, the information goes directly to Illuminate as well as to um, our team so that we can create shows that are relevant and interesting to you and provide great information and resources that are relevant and interesting to you. So please take a moment to fill that out. Um, we do try to post those the link in the GLAM link. And I'm going to go ahead and post the GLAM link for you as well in the session. And the GLAM link is there. And I'm going to go ahead and post that on the slide as well. And you can remember the GLAM link for the glamorous co-host of Classroom 2.0. I'm having trouble posting it, but anyway, I'll get it posted. But have a great day, everybody, and we are so grateful, and thank you that you have joined us. And be sure to stick around and fill out the survey. Yes, Lorna. I just wonder if Carla has a few minutes to talk about her online sessions and how she's organized. Absolutely. I can stay a little bit. Go ahead and go. If you yeah, need to go, you, we understand you're welcome to go. But if you can stay, we'd love you to stick around. And Carla, if you can tell us about some of your online um, courses and work that you're doing. Sure. I, I'm here, Norman. What, kind, what would you like to know? I happen to look at the course that you were just dividing designing for Thomas Jefferson. And you're using mm -hmm. something called Evoca. Evoca for yes. the language mm -hmm. learning. I use that, but the point with Evoca is that now they are they are they want to charge, so I'm not using that anymore. <laughs> 
Let you uh, I have some recording. Yes, I have some recording recordings with my students um, uh, in the Listening Plus course. It's a course for EFL students that are learning English and they want to practice their listening skills. Have you found a, a, a substitute for that one? Mm, nowadays, sometimes I use uh, even YouTube, and um, what I've been doing is I I don't know if you've heard of the Webcast Academy for sure. I know that Peggy was there, I guess, weren't you, Peggy? Wasn't? Yes, we 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 do. I I'm looking for a I think tool we've to all, use for. Yes. Yeah. Oh yes. So well, I was just looking uh, for a tool to, to replace it. That's all. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you mean like for students to record, right? Exactly, because I, I, I don't really think they need to go through webcast to Canada. I'm looking for yes, a really yes, easy tool yes. to, I was to thinking record about with. Myself. Right? Yes, but for the students, um, I have used Utterly, Utterly, um, I think it's utterly.com. Uh, what else? Uh, what else have I tried with my students? There is one that I just got from uh, Derf Dial to Go. So I think these are some options that um, students could use. I know that utterly you can even create a group, so you could have your students in the group and um, they could add voice. Um, Dial to Go. I just received from Derf. Um, a message and it works pretty nicely. But you know what? I was just thinking, Lorna, the easiest way to do it is using postures. Sorry? Postures, I just posted the link. It's an email, it's a, it's a blog platform. But the, the good thing about it is that if the, your students record in any place in their, on their computers like uh, using Audacity or Using even the voice record and e recorder in a PC, what they can do is when they send the um, because you don't need to go to Postures to post to the blog. You you post it from your email account. So when they post with uh, an MP3 attachment, um, you get the the already the player you know with their their MP3 files. I think it's the easiest way. I just like the fact that I can pick up a telephone. Just for those people uh -huh. who don't have access to high speed, that they could actually make their recording. That's why when I saw Evoke, I said, "Oh, this is really exciting for that for that um, it was, challenge." It was it was very community. easy. Yes, it was very easy. But uh, they wanted to charge me, so I just gave up. Um, Kim has a good reminder of a nice one, the GCast. It's a nice one. But Postures is fantastic. I, I really think it's powerful. It's easy for students to use. Uh, you can set a, a classroom blog, and if they email to a certain um, account there, then it goes straight to your group blog. So I think you can do really fun things using Postures. Oh, and the I know fact you've that a lot of fun. <laughs> You've got a lot of fun I'm things. <laughs> I'm just waiting. Like, I can't get enough of you. Every place I go, oh, look at that great idea. Look at that great idea. Like it just seems to flow from you. So you know, it's really exciting to follow you on Twitter and what you're doing. So, and I know all the, the, the exercises that those exercises in image for education. Like there was such a good learning process that there's someone there to support you, and you could problem solve on your own because you gave us the tools. So that's really exciting. And everyone just sort of you know, take a look and uh, try out even one session, and every piece is worth what we did. So. Yes, I think if you could learn one thing there, we are happy. And uh, well, that's the idea, you know. I learn a lot from the, you know, our network as well, and I'm mm -hmm. always learning with you. In fact, I think you are from the parents as partners, aren't you, Lorna? That's right. Yeah. Exactly. Because of you, I started the blog for my students' parents, and it's just doing fantastically well. My my, the parents are are really really uh, excited 
to have like a channel of communication with me. They tend not to write in the comment area, but they every time I post something, they send an email. It's just a lot of fun. That's great. You have to give me the link to that. Yeah, you can share that one. It's in Portuguese. Um, I have to write okay. in Portuguese for them, but uh, <laughs> you could try. <laughs> Yes. So because of you, because of the parents as partners, I, I had this idea of trying it out with my parents and it was great. Yeah, oh, yes, be interesting to see, even if it is in Portuguese. So. But thank you. Yes, yes. That's nice to hear. So. Yeah, I'm going to post the link here. Um, yes, Peg, the Tech Talk shows is because uh, I just love Jeff and we have a We've been playing around for so many years now, and he's always trying to get me to the webcast academy and finish it, and I'm always there. <laughs> yeah, because you're a webhead. We didn't actually talk about being a webhead today. Yes, yes, exactly. But then it would be a topic for the whole session. <laughs> right. Yes, being a webhead. That's right. So, well, I thank you very yes. much. I, I appreciate thank you getting all the answers this morning. And if you have any questions about e-learning things, uh, not that I am an expert, but uh, I've been playing around with it a lot. Um, here's the link, crescedigital.blogspot.com. Yes, thank you. I, I've got that. Lorna, do you speak French? <laughs> no, I'm not, well, no, I don't. I, guess, yeah. I speak Italian better than I speak <laughs> French, which is silly. <laughs> Because I'm saying if you speak understand. French, you might be able to understand the Portuguese. Yes. Uh, I speak Italian, so that's, that's a little easier. Yes. So. Yes. You think being in Canada, I would be fluent in French, but I'm not because mm -hmm. it is it, it is a second language here. And, and if you don't live in an environment, and that, Moses, yeah. if you don't live in the environment and speak it all the time, you lose it. Mm -hmm. My Italian gets rustic when I'm not with my family in Italy. So. But thank you. That's my question. Anyone else had a question or, or you need to go, Carla? I had a quick question. Carla, what did you use? What program did you use to take your screenshots? Um, uh, it's funny because um, I used to just use the print screen button, but for some time now I've been using two. One online called the Qualt. Do you know this one? Qualt, like this Qualt. Uh, this one. Oh. Uh, I think it's this is one of the uh, that I use. But the other one, do, are you on a PC or a Mac? Um, I have access to both now. Yes. Okay. So PC. I am. Unfortunately, I am a PC girl, so um, me too. What? <laughs> so um, in Vista, if you have Vista, there is a tool in Accessories called Snipping Tool. It's just fantastic. I didn't know about that, but just when I was playing around oh. with my computer, I learned this about this tool, and it's the the easiest oh. tool to have a screenshot of something. And another way to have a screenshot is by using Jing. Jing is great too yes. because you can add text yes. and stuff. But the, the snipping tool for me is the easiest one. And then I just uh, leave it on my computer or I upload my screenshots to um, Flickr. And then uh, sometimes I need to add it, add it, add some text, and then I use Picnic. Okay, because I was wondering how you got the great, the cool shapes and and stuff. Oh no, this this is um, by using the um, uh, the PowerPoint PowerPoint uh, 2007, I guess. Then you, you okay. can do that with your with your uh, images. Okay. They, I really like the way it, you know, it, it's really nice the way it is set. And you have many options, but I like the, that one better, the one that I use more frequently. Okay, cool. I use Indonesia like because 
I use MW Snap because you can set it to um, automatically save and it names it and saves it to a specified folder automatically for you once you yes. snap the image. Mm -hmm. What I really like about Cloud Skin is that um, you can send it straight to Flickr. So sometimes I use that. I, I have a folder there in Flickr called Screenshots, or sometimes I create like a, a series of screenshots, and you can have like a slideshow of uh, with the screenshots. So it's really cool. Cloud is really powerful. I had forgotten about Clout. Yes, and they they've been adding new features all the time, so it's it's a lot of fun. Yes, Peggy, I've been doing that, and um, it helps me a lot when I have a I have a folder in in Flickr called screenshots. So I post all my my screenshots there, and uh, with Clout, it's good because sometimes I I get a quote. A nice quote and things, and sometimes I just revisit them. It's fun. Oh yes, um, we are reminded here that cloud can be sent directly to Blogger, which is true. Yes, it can do a lot of stuff. To Tumblr, sometimes when I want to blog, like. Really fast. Uh, sometimes I use uh, Cloud connected to Tumblr, and um, you just send it to Tumblr, and that's it. Yeah, that is quick and convenient. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. And a, a very cool tool that I've been playing around is Simply Box. Have you tried it? No, I haven't heard of it. Oh. Oh, try it! It's 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 just amazing. Is it like Dropbox or a storage? I I don't know. It's the one that you can box things, but you keep them. It's it's right, really visual. You can add like a page with boxes of your screenshots, and then you can give that page to people to comment. It's a lot of fun. Okay, I'll have to check it out. By the way, Lorna, this was one of the ways I used to connect with the the team. Um, we were in doubt what what um, logo we would use for our session, so I had many options. I boxed them, and they chose from there. It, it was a lot of fun to do that. Oh, I think Peggy and I talked about this one time. Yeah. Yeah, you should try it. I have to go back and look at it. I find it happens. I get start getting lost in space with all these different tools. <laughs> there's so many options. So it's kind of nice to hear, you know, ones that you really like that that work. And it's nice to have someone's filter to uh, make those decisions. <laughs> yes, yes, it, it is a lot of fun. Oh, Peggy, right now, how many tabs? I have no idea. I have like, uh, today I couldn't open Illuminate with uh, Firefox, so I needed to open uh, uh, Explorer to, I don't know what happened, I, I couldn't get to Illuminate through Firefox. So I, I have my Explorer open, and then the Firefox open, and all tabs all together, tons of them. Plus, you know, Twitter things and stuff. You have 50, Peggy? I know I don't have 50 open, but I might have almost 15 or so. But girls, um, it was great being here with you. Thanks for the invitation. It's really nice to, you know, spread the word about um, the EVO sessions. We, people there work really hard for the community and, and I